Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. So we have the wood all stacked up. Uh, we got three, I think it's about 12 feet rows. And then we got part of another one right through here and that's all covered up as well. So we did get a good amount of wood. Um, so I feel much better about making it through the winter with no issues now that we have all the wood here. Uh, like I said, we still have all this wood here to burn first. That'll get burnt first because that's last year's wood, so, and it's really dry, and it's burning really awesome. Um, so that's uh, a chore out of the way. And so now you're going to love this story. So we're looking, and we're trying to push up that one side of this because it won't get up high enough to put the block under, okay? So I'm like, I, I, we're going to have to take this off. So we take this off because we figure it's just, you know, tight. it's just too tight. So we're pushing, pushing, pushing. So I'm like, we got to take it all the way off. So we take it all the way off. And up at the top, <laughs> there was, right up here at the top, it was it came down farther. And it's as high as it could go. So all, all of us pushing, pushing, pushing on it, it made no difference. It wasn't going to go any higher until then. So we notched it out so that we could get the block underneath there. And now it's good to go. So... Um, I know it doesn't seem like it makes a big difference as far as height-wise on the panels, but it will because the snow will accumulate down lower, and then it will also right go right down through the holes of the uh, the blocks. So it's going to make a difference that way as well. So it's a little higher. And like I said, the game plan is, I think in the spring, um, I'm definitely going to be adding more panels. So I think what I may do is I may leave these six just the way they are, because they're already all hooked up and they're all squared away and the line is buried and everything else. So I think I may just leave those the way they are. When I buy my new panels, um, I'm probably looking at doing a pole mount. And if I do that, so what I'm, this is the, the new thought. Everything changes. I listened to your guys' advice because when I talked about possibly putting the panels up on top of the roof, um, you know, everybody's like, no, 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 no. And it makes sense. So what I'm thinking is, if I do a pole mount like right here, okay, um, or not like right here, but like maybe back in this area more, all right, and have it up higher and have it so that I can move the thing or, you know, like a, a, do a tracking device on it. And so that when the sun comes up in the morning up over here, then I can have it and then turn it as the day goes and go through and then that way we'll get more sunshine from it so that i think is what we're going to do um i'm hoping that this next year i can add another 1500 watts i know i plan on definitely adding at least three more panels next year um, i'm hoping to add six panels next year which would put me up to 3000 watts and then we'll see how that does for i mean in the summertime like i said 1500 watts we're good to go all day, all day, all night. Then when we shut down, we're good to go. But obviously, this time of year, we need more panels. Um, I eventually will set up a wind turbine as well. It's just, like I said, guys, it's just a process. So, um, you know, that's that's what the game plan is going to be as far as that goes. So, but uh, today, as you can see, it's a cloudy, overcast day. And uh, so, I mean, right now for the entire day, we've brought in a total at this point of 0.3 kilowatt hours. So we're really not producing um, much of anything on a day like today. And, uh, you know, we've had some rain and stuff like that too. So it's just uh, cool, damp, really not a fun day. <laughs> so um, today is the 26th of November. I had to see, I had to look at the thing, I don't even remember half the time. Um, it's Saturday, and uh, we're just kind of plugging along here. So I wanted to share my thoughts with that and, and tell you the story about the, the why we couldn't get that up higher anymore, and that was pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, everything is, uh, you know, things are moving along. We're doing good. Um, like I said, I feel good about having the wood all stacked up. Um, it's a pain in the butt trying to get things done. It really is. But uh, that was real important to get scored away. So, like, as you can see, it's uh, it's all in there now. It's tarped. And we're, you know, good to go as far as that goes. So, 
just going to keep plugging away at things and uh, get through this winter. We're, uh, you know, almost into December, and it's it's amazing to me how fast the time goes. Uh, this year is almost over already. I'm looking forward to December uh, 21st, which is the winter solstice, because then we start gaining sunlight every day. And uh, that's going to make a difference for us as well, because with it being so dark so early, it's just it's killing us as far as power goes. So, but you know, like I said, it's um, you know, as I have I've said, stated in other videos, when I when we first got up here, I had said that uh, you know we would use solar and then the generator as a backup, and uh, I'll use a combination of both. So our first you know summer up here, we produced a certain amount of power. We upgraded everything this spring, and uh, you know. Like during the summer this year, we didn't have to use a generator at all, which was nice. And, uh, you know, we are using a generator um, to supplement our power needs right now. And, uh, but the thing is, it's, uh, you know, the ultimate goal is to run year round on solar and uh, eventually a wind turbine as well. And have enough power that we don't have to run the generator. But have the generator is an emergency backup. You know, if we run into four, five, six days in a row where we get no power coming in, if we had to use it, then we would. But, you know, uh, ultimately the goal is to have everything run completely on solar and, and you know, and obviously a wind turbine. So, you know, that's kind of where we're what we're looking at. That's the ultimate goal, um, you know. It's just, you know, yes, right now we still have to rely on a generator, but, uh, you know, we do get power in every day, so it's not like we're not having any power, even though we're not having a lot of power coming in. But, you know, like I said, ultimately we will have it so that it is completely, you know, set up to where we are running completely independently with the solar. It's an investment like anything else, you know. If you want it bad enough, you're going to make it happen. Now, I've had people last year, especially last year, they were like, well, why are you, you know, using a generator? Why don't you temporarily hook up to the grid? And uh, my thought process with that was, as soon as you are hooked up to the grid, now it's not a priority to get the other things squared away. When you are relying on this as your way of, of producing your power, um, you know, you have to work on it to make it better. So, um, we did invest a lot of money this year. Like I said, the batteries are freaking awesome. They're great batteries. Uh, the system works really, really well. And, uh, you know, and again, I got to, you know, do a quick shout out to, to Bill and Rosa. Um, I talked with him and he gave me a lot of great advice. And uh, so that made all the difference in the world as well, you know, as far as that goes. And, uh, you know, and it's just, again, it's, it's people helping each other. And that's, I think it's the biggest thing with the off-grid community. For the most part, people are trying to help each other. And, uh, you know, my biggest thing is, and it's like, you know, I try to explain to people, you know, it's, it's always going to be a work in progress. There's always going to be something else you're going to tweak, work on, uh, other projects. You know, we got our water. I, I look back, I'll be honest with you guys, and... Uh, you know, it's been a year and five months that we've been up here now, and uh, it, it's amazing to me what we've accomplished in the time period, and also with me working full time, with uh, you know trying to raise two kids, one child with autism, and uh, you know we have really got a lot done, and uh, you know now having running water as well. I mean, it sounds like, you know, a big deal running water, but, man, it's a huge thing. It really is a huge thing. But, you know, it, it, it's just, uh, it's an adventure. It's a journey. And, uh, you know, and I just, I'm stubborn. I am stubborn, and I dig my heels in sometimes, and I go, that's it. This is what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I came into this, and, you know, and, and here's the funny thing, and I got, I got to tell you, I, I just, I find certain things amusing, and especially when people, certain people will make a comment, um, and they have no videos, no icon, no subscribers, or they'll have two subscribers, but, you know, they have no, no content to their channel, and they're going to criticize um, because I did things a certain way that I hired out a lot of the help um, to have things done. 
But see, here's the funny part about that, okay? If I had done, like, let's say I did the electrical myself, okay? Let's just use that as an example. Instead of having a licensed electrician come in and do it to code the right way, I would have been hammered with, you're doing it, you're jerry-rigging it, you're not doing it right, you know, that's not up to code, and da-da-da-da-da, and I would have been hammered on, okay? Um, with the plumbing, you know, now plumbing is not as technical, but if I want things done right, I'm going to hire the person in here to do it the right way. Um, you know, do I don't have to do everything. There's no thing in a manual that says if you are a prepper or you're off-grid that you have to do all these things yourself. Well, do you need to know how to maintain them? Well, sure, but having it done and having it done the right way for me, it's a safety issue, number one, because of my children, and I want it done right. So, yeah, I hired people out to do certain things. Um, the solar, I took advice from people that knew what they were doing, that were living off-grid, and, you know, they helped me and explained things, and so that we did ourselves, you know. But, it, it, again, it's like you're always going to have people that are going to be critical of whatever you do. You're not going to make everybody happy, and... Um, I'm going to make a quick, quick message to um, Icky Can up in Canada. Um, he was, uh, you know, somebody had made a comment, oh, you know, you're so negative. Listen, my friend, let me explain to you. The bigger you get, the more hate you're going to deal with. You're going to have people that are always going to have something negative to say. Don't pay attention to it. Don't feed into that don't because they thrive on it they can't they love it they they want the chaos they want the negativity they want their acknowledgement that they're saying something negative and bad just delete those kind of comments you know don't even acknowledge them just delete them they're not worth the, the worth the waste of your energy what you are doing up there by yourself um you know building your outbuildings this year for the goats and for the chickens and the rabbits man that's amazing you've done an awesome job my friend you really truly have and my hats off to you you know and you you've gotten it you've accomplished so much don't listen to that negativity don't because they want to bring you down because people are jealous people are petty um who knows why just be, because they have no life you know um anybody that is off-grid my hat goes off to you because I know how hard it is. It's not an easy thing to do. You know, there's always work. There's always something to do. And, you know, it's making a time to do it, you know. Um, like I said, me personally, I'm trying to do this by working a full-time job and also taking care of my kids. So, you know, my, my time is really limited to what I can do and when I can do it, you know. So, but anyway, I'm rambling like I normally do. So it's starting to rain again, and I don't want to be rained on, and it's cold out here, so I'm going in the house. Listen, guys, have a wonderful day. Have a good weekend. Remember, hug and kiss the ones you love, because tomorrow is not guaranteed. It never is. So making sure that people know how you feel about them is really, really, really important. And, you know, and I'm going to add this in today, too, because of a comment that was made. And I want people to really take this to heart, okay? Um, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. We all have our moments in time where we're down, we feel like crap, and it, it, it looks like it's a viable option. But what you got to think about is when you commit suicide, your pain is over. But the people you leave in your wake, it's horrible that they have to deal with the fact that you've done this horrible thing to yourself, that you didn't feel that you had enough self-worth that you would take your own life and then you leave people behind. It's a horrible, horrible thing. So um, I'm going to leave you with that. And remember, guys, it's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. And you're going to reach whatever goals that you have. You really will. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you later. Prepper Nurse 1 out for now.